Hi all, let's learn about EA6 generators and its practical use cases. So in a normal function, we'll call a function. And in that function, there would be sequence of lines to be executed and we may have written statement or not. But at one point, the function would be execute stops and it will come out of the function. Unlike, unlike normal functions, generator is also a function, but it works like an iterator. Like uh, we'll have we'll have a generator function, so at it will execute some of the lines and it will yield the value. It means yield is nothing but it's a written statement to the generator version. It's a written statement of the generator version. It will yield a value. It means it will return some value, and it will stops at this point and it will exit from the function. So rest of the lines would be there there itself, and we can call the function back and it will resume from the point where it was stopped. So that is the main difference between a normal function and a generator. It can stop at some point and it can exit from that point and it can return a value with the yield keyword. Let's see all this with the practical examples. So this is a normal function. We know a normal function we can create a function with function keyword, or also we can create these functions with the arrow functions as well. Unlike this no arrow functions, generators can only be created with the function keyword. We can't create a generator function with the arrows, arrow based syntax. So that thing we need to uh, remember. So we can't create a generator function uh, uh, with an arrow, arrow based notation. So coming to generator function, we have a generator function here it looks similar to a function. So we have uh, certain lines of code. So here yield, we are yielding a value hello. It means we are returning a value of hello. So we are we have created a function, I mean an object. How, how to use this generator function? We need to create an object for that generator function. So we have created an object. And for that object, if we call generator object dot next, it means it will return an object like this. The value is the value which it is going to return. And done is a Boolean. It, it will return true or false. It will return if it returns true. It means the generated function was ended. It means it was completed. So most of the times yield and this done value would be false. The done value would be true at the last statement of the generator function. So whenever we create an object to the generator function, we, we need to call next to call this function. So I have called next here. So this function will be called once. So what happens here? I have called this function and it will execute the first statement here. And in the second statement, it will yield the value and it will stop at this point. It will stop the execution and it will exit from the function. It will come back. So here I will be getting the value, the value as hello. So I'm returning a value of hello. This is an object. Every time whenever you call a generator object dot next, it would be written an object in this format. So the value would be anything. It would be an object or it would be a string or anything which yields and mean which returns at this point. So now we have stopped and exited from this point. So the output would be like this. So done would be false as still there are many results here. So next again, I'm calling next function. So uh, usually that won't be the case in the real world. You can call, you can have a number of operations here. Uh, I mean, a business logic can be implemented here. And later, whenever you need it, you can call the next statement. So like this on the same generator object. So now the operation will resume at this point. Again, the the function execution starts from this point. It works as a bookmark. It will resume the point where it was exited. So it will it will start execution from this point. So it will console or it will write some business logic. It will implement some business logic. And again, it will yield the value of world. So now again, we'll be getting an object with value world world value and the done object would be still false. So here the done all object would be still false. Again, if someone calls the next function, it, and now here it was stopped and I, it was executed. So again, calling next means we are trying to resume the function. So even if the function resumes, there, there is nothing to be yield. 
there is no word to be yield or no value to be written so we'll be getting undefined here so nothing would be written back here and the done would be to stating that the generator function was completed at this point so again if you wanted to use same function again so you need to create a new object again once it was done with the true statement again we can't use the same object here so that's this use case here and also let's state something like written if we write something like written we are going to return some value here i'm saying end so what does it means it means we are forcefully keeping the object done as true so this is what we are doing it means the statements which are wrote after the written statement would be not executed F written is a statement we are forcefully stopping the execution of the generator function in sense it is keeping done as true it means we are stating that the generator function was completed so that is all we need to keep about this written statement we need to keep that in mind about written so not only yielding the value in sense it is only just written the value which was computed there we also can generate i mean we also can pass the parameters to the generator function in sense i am i have created this is a sample generator function we can also pass the parameters to the generator function in this way right i have passed one so here the i value would be one now i am passing values to the generator so here there is an important point we need to observe i have passed one so now yield plus plus one it means it is yielding value of two i would be two at this point it has yield the value of two and it is stopped here it was stopped and exited so when i call g dot next it goes here and it returns an object in fact so in that object the value would be two okay so again if i if i send any value if you want to send any value to the generator again you can send in this format next of three now this three will be go to here this point it will resume at this point it will resume the function from this point so it we are sending this three to this yield it means this yield is assigning value three to returned from yield value so if the yield again returns some value that would be three the value here would be the three because we are passing some some value i'm just showing how this yield is resuming and it is assigning the value which we have sent and it is giving here so after this we can have the business logic where with the parameter which we have sent so that's the main purpose of uh, passing the parameters or arguments to the generator function so now this is the reason it was resumed with the three value and it is assigned the three value to return from yield so that's the reason again if i am yielding this variable we are going to get three as a value here so also we have seen how the generator works with the parameters as well so now let's let's come to the picture like uh, how what are the practical use cases of generators so the first practical use case of generators is redux saga so you might have heard about redux saga it is a library it is a middleware library used for the redux applications i mean uh, react with redux applications wherever we use redux most of the times we will be using redux saga as well it is used as an it is a library it is used as a middleware between the store and the reducer so these are the concepts uh, i mean uh, just wanted to show the code the implementation practical use case of these generators these generators are often used in this redux saga you can straight away see the code base here so it is using an generator function this is a redux saga official site it is using directly the function generator function and it is yielding the values here the put and call or the redux saga effects so here you can find these are the internal methods of redux saga it is trying to yield some values it is trying to throw some values from this put and call statements so this is the best practical use case of generator functions so coming to the second example of a practical use case of these generators is async and await so 
you you might have heard about async and await uh, let me show in a google example as well so async and await async and await of javascript or built on top of generators so just wanted to explain the practical example so see async and await in javascript or actually those are abstractions those are built on top of generators so in in sense you we can assume like this uh, we can uh, state a statement like this async await is equal to it means it was implemented with generators plus promises so i think and await implementation was handled on generators and promises as well so the second best use case of uh, generators would be async and await so here i think it would working as a wrapper of generator so it would be like a wrapper wrapper uh, uh, function as a generator it it works as a generator function whereas await would be working like an uh, yield in our case in the generators more often it also works with the promises so it also uses the promise here so whether it, it would be resolved or rejected it was an additional feature not only just generators a promises also it would be using so the second best practical use case for the async and await would be generators also we can see here the statement of async and await is an abstraction which was built on top of generators so this is the second best example and the third use case for this is generating unique or uh, we can call it as an lazy evaluations so lazy calculations as well so in sense whenever we need an calculation or a, a expression which should be evaluated lazily it should not be evaluated immediately or at some point of time if it is needed or not at that particular point only if you wanted to calculate something then you can use this generators so not uh, just calculating it and keeping at that point and using that instead that we can use uh, the advantage of generator as a lazy evaluation and we can evaluate the value at the point of when it is needed so with this we can also use the memory efficiency because we are not doing unnecessary operations i mean we are not calling or calculating something which is not needed at that point we are calculating a value which is needed at that point so in that use cases also we can use this generators with that the memory efficiency also increases i mean we are not using unnecessary variables or we are not calculating which is not necessary so these are the practical use cases for generators not only this there are couple of libraries which are built on top of generators so one of the would be branch and co these are the library libraries built on top of generators so these libraries are, are like an inter interspectors which internally works as a test tool tool kits but anyhow these would be used as an uh, generators would be the base concepts for these libraries as well so this is all about generators hope you like the video thanks for watching